ان الحمد لله نحمده نستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله alayhi salatu wassalam to begin we continue today reading and this is our third session reading from the qasida the manzuma al haiya by its nazim its author the great imam the allama the alam of the sunnah the guide post of the sunnah hafiz ibn ahmed ibn ali al hakami rahimahullah ta'ala and this Qasida al Ha'iya, it is about al Zuhd, wa Targhibi, wa Tarheeb. It is about being disinterested in this dunya. And the subject matter of a Tarheeb, of a Targhib, wa Tarheeb, encouraging us to work for the reward of Allah in the hereafter, and frightening us from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hereafter. We continue. But the statement of the author, لَقَدْ جَاءَ فِي آيَ الْحَدِيدِ وَيُونُسٍ وَفِي الْكَحْفِ إِضَاحُ بِضَرْبِ مِثَالِهَا وَفِي آلِ عِمْرَانَ وَصُورَةِ فَاطِرِ وَفِي غَافِرِ قَدْ جَاءَتْ بِيَانُ حَالِهَا وَفِي صُورَةِ الْأَحْقَافِ أَعْظَمُ وَاعِذٍ وَكَمِنْ حَدِيثٍ مُوجِبٍ اِعْتِزَانِهَا He says, may Allah have mercy upon him. That there has come the uh, that the mention has come in the Quran concerning the parable of the dunya, the reality of the dunya. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, He has given us amthila, He has given us examples that are mahsusa that are physical things for concepts that are ma'nawiyah, for concepts that are spiritual in nature. There are many examples, many parables in the book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam, pertaining guidance, pertaining the reality of Iman, the reality of Kufr, the reality of a Tawheed, the reality of a Shirk, the reality of the dunya, the reality of the hereafter, and the likes of these topics that are spiritual in nature. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us something to compare these things to that is physical, that we can physically witness with our eyes. And doesn't the one who created them know? Why he is a latif al khabir, the reality of these things and what is closest to resembling these things. To help them understand the reality of these most important affairs. He says that has come in the verses in Surah Al Hadid. We'll come to see exactly what he means. And likewise in Surah Yunus, likewise in Surah Al Kahf, the explanation by the setting of parables. And likewise, there has come in Surah Ali Imran, and Surah Fatir, and Surah Ghafir. The explanation of the state of the dunya, the reality of the dunya. He says that these verses that are indicated, that are being indicated to by the Nadim, the author, may Allah have mercy upon him, the compiler of these lines of poetry. And these three verses of poetry that we heard, or lines of poetry that we heard, I'm going to explain and clarify. And he, why they are mentioned in this order, and the main objective for why the author mentioned their place in the Quran, wa in wufiqtu falhamdulillah illadi bi nimati dati musalihat. And if I am given success in doing so, then our praises due to Allah, on account of whose favor all righteous things are completed. Wa in qasura bi al fahmu fa astaghfirullah. And if I fall short. And understanding why the author 
has placed them here, as Shaykh Zaid and Madkhali, Rahmatullah alayhi, says, and I seek Allah's forgiveness. Fal Ayatul Ula, the first verse, is the most strict, the most descriptive verse in the Quran about the dunya. As Ibn al Qayyim said in some of his writings, that this verse is the most descriptive verse in the Quran about the reality of the dunya. Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I'lamu annama al hayatu dunya. Know, all of you, that the life of this world is nothing but innama nafi wa ithbat. From the Bab of Mantuq and Muafaqa, and he from that which is explicit in the most explicit expressions of the Quran, where Allah has affirmed the reality of something and negated that it is anything but what he has described. He says, I'lamu, have ilm, have certain knowledge, have certain knowledge that the life of the world is nothing but the following things. It is la'ibun wa lahu. It is nothing but play and amusement. Wa zinatun. Thirdly, it is nothing but beauty, an object of beauty. Zinatun, a simple object of beauty. Tafakhurun baynakum. Fourthly, it is an object of mutual boasting between you. Takathurun fil amwali wal awlad. And it is. Nothing but a competition between you for wealth and children. Five things. It's the reality of the dunya. The summary of the dunya. What are they fighting over? What are they killing each other over? What have they fought and killed each other over for thousands of years? What is the reality of this dunya that has caused millions of men to march to their deaths, to protect it and to fight for it? What is the reality of the dunya that is worshipped by the people and is loved more than anything and venerated more than anything, to the point that the people have forgotten about why they are here and where they came from. What is the reality of this world? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, is given it, he has given it five descriptive traits. It is nothing but la'ibun wa lahu. It is the la'ib of the abdan. Kal-la'ib is subyan some of the scholars of tafsir they mention as mentioned by Qurtubi and others and he, it is nothing but the playing of the bodies like the playing about of little children the playing of the bodies like the playing about of little children wa lahu a lahu al-qulub lahu al-jinan it is nothing but the amusement secondly the entertainment and amusement that the heart distracts itself with that the heart distracts itself with. Like lahu shubban. Like the amusement of the youth. Like the amusement of youth, of the young in age. Any of those past that age of childhood. Wazinatun. Kazinatun naswan. And it's nothing but zina. Thirdly. An object of beauty. That is obsessed over. Like the beauty that is obsessed over by women. Fourthly, it is tafakhur. It is nothing but an object of boasting. An object of boasting. Indeed, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala la yuhibbu kulla mukhtarin fakhur. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala doesn't love the people of al ikhtiyal wal fakhr. As Luqman said in his advice to his son, and indeed Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala doesn't love every prideful, boasting person. So it is the tafakhur, katafakhur al Arabi wal Akran, like the boasting of uncivilized Bedouins, and like the boasting of peers between one another. وَتَكَاثُرٌ فِي الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَوْلَادِ كَتَكَاثُرُ الدِّقَانِ Scala, as he said, and fifthly, it is nothing like, it is nothing but the competition to accumulate wealth and children, like the competing that is done by the rulers of the earth. 
the competing that is done by the rulers of the earth, that which they fight over and that which they compete over. I would say are really willing to shed blood over and the likes of. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, after mentioning the descriptive traits of the dunya, He lets us know what is going to become of all of it. All that we have done to busy our bodies, all that we have done to busy our hearts, all that we have done to busy our eyes with of the beauty of the dunya, all that we have done to have the bragging rights and to keep up with the Joneses, all that we have done to accumulate wealth and children just for the sake of having material things and not using our wealth and not raising our children in a matter pleasing to Allah that will leave a legacy for us in the hereafter and after we die that will allow us to be reunited with our children and either person, Ibn Adam, he dies and three things go with him to his grave and only any two of them go back and only one remains his wealth, his family, and his deeds the only thing he takes with him is his deeds the only thing he takes with him is his deeds <clears throat> so Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala he has told us the reality of what becomes of all of this and how it becomes like what we see today this season of the year <clears throat> when the vegetation has dried the grass has withered the leaves have fallen the harvest has occurred and the plants have been uprooted from the fruits and vegetables have been uprooted from the soil and the earth that was once beautiful and the earth that was once the object of people busying themselves and the earth that was that which preoccupied people's hearts and the earth that the people boasted over and so on and so forth is lifeless it is lifeless and that which the people have done it is as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he describes all that was not for his sake he said كَمَثَلِ غَيْثِ نَعْجَبَ الْكُفَارَ نَبَاتُهُ it is like the غيث the غيث الغيث هو الذي ينزل الغيث من بعد ما قنته وينشر رحمته الغيث in the Arabic language is from الغوث الغوث Ghoth, yani the word al for example. al is to seek deliverance from distress. And al is the rainwater that is beneficial. It is only the rain that is beneficial is called al Rainwater in general is called al-matar. But here Allah mentions that it is something beneficial that He sent to mankind. This comes in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is a hadith in Qudsi. Inna yaqulu, yaqulu Allah Ta'ala Inna anzalna al-mal Iqamat al-salati wa ita'i zakat That indeed we have sent down wealth to the earth for the paint for the establishment of the salat meaning the building of masajid. Wa ita'i zakat And for the payment of the poor. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala has sent wealth to the earth so that we can fulfill His rights and the rights of His creation. Kamathari ghaith It is like abundant... <coughs> Beneficial rainwater. A'jab al kufara nabatu. That gives rise to vegetation and growth. That astonishes the kufar. And in the word kufr, in the Arabic language, it means to cover something up. It means to cover something up. And so, planters are called kufar. I need the people who till the soil and place the seeds inside of the soil are called kufar in the Arabic language. And kufr is kufr. The disbelievers are disbelievers because they conceal the truth. Because they conceal the truth. So which is meant here? The scholars, they say both of them are meant. According to which example we're looking at. Because we have a physical thing and we have a spiritual thing here. The dunya is being compared to something physical. The dunya, the concept of the dunya, its reality, which is a spiritual concept, the reality of the dunya, is being compared to something physical. And so both of them are men, and this is from the eloquence of the Quran. It is like the ghaith, the beneficial rainwater that falls in abundance 
that gives rise to vegetation that astonishes the planters and he those that toil and till the soil and so on and so forth they're astonished with what grew it's amazing that the lifeless earth grew all of this by the permission of Allah grew all of this vegetation all these vegetables and fruits and so on and so forth and in the same way the kufar are astonished with the dunya so this is from the evidences that being astonished with the dunya is from the traits of the disbelievers. It doesn't mean that if a person is astonished with the dunya, he is a disbeliever. It means that it is from the qualities of the disbelievers. And so by a Muslim having these qualities, and he is in a way resembling the disbelievers, and his iman is at jeopardy of decreasing substantially and being taken from him completely. This is common in the statement of the Prophet sallallahu where he said, Badiru bil amal fitan and qatita alayl al mudlim. Hadith that we've heard many, many times. Rush to do good deeds because trials and temptations are going to come like pieces of the darkness falling from the night sky. At the time a person will begin his day as a believer, wa yumsi kafiran, and retire at the end of his day as a disbeliever, ya bi udina hu bi aradin min ad dunya, selling his religion for a piece of the dunya. Now, some people who would sell out their whole religion. Meaning that, not just in their actions, but in their heart. Make the halal, or make the haram halal. Make what they know for a fact of certainty, to be forbidden in their religion. Many of the scholars, they applied this hadith to the mass infighting that occurred over the generations in the history of Islam. They said that the kafir here, could be one of two things, as the Prophet وسلم, he said, and he sabab al Muslim fusuq wa qitaluhu kufr. That abusing the believer, meaning verbally, is wickedness, and killing him is, or fighting him rather, is disbelief. Meaning that it is the lesser disbelief, kufrun asghar, that leads to major disbelief. And the thing that is, Telling whether it is major belief or major disbelief or minor disbelief is his view pertaining it. If he believes that it is permissible to shed the blood of a Muslim, and this is from those things that is known by necessity in our religion, that the blood of the Muslim is inviolable, and he is a disbeliever. And this is from the evidences for the disbelief of the Khawaj, of the terrorist insurgents of every generation, of the terrorist groups from the Haruriya in the time of the companions of the Prophet Wasallam, up into the groups that exist today. Because a person who believes that it is permissible to shed the blood of a Muslim, he is upon the brink of destruction. لا يزال المؤمن في فصحة من دينه ما لم يصب دما حراما And he the believer still has some room pertaining his religion. The believer, he still has some hope so long as he has not shed inviolable blood. So long as he has not shed inviolable blood. So some of the scholars, they say that this is referring to that. That this is referring to that. And he's the person who sells his deen for a portion of the dunya. He's willing to commit murder for his dunya, to shed the blood of believers and so on and so forth. But whatever the case, it shows us the repugnant nature of being obsessed with the dunya. And how that is from the qualities of the disbelievers. And how it is kufr. And how it is minor kufr at least. And how it is that which leads rather to minor kufr at least. And he being obsessed with the dunya. And it leads people to making halal what Allah made haram and the likes of that. So it's a dangerous affair. It's a dangerous affair. So Allah wa ta'ala, he said it is like the abundant rain water that falls upon the earth. That, is th- that causes vegetation to grow. That astonishes the disbelievers. It astonishes the disbelievers. And the disbelievers are those that are astonished with this dunya. And then you see it dry. And you see it become yellow in color. You see it become yellow in color as opposed to any being green or as opposed to whatever color it was when it was ripe and luscious and so on and so forth. ثُمَّ يَكُونُ حُطَامَةً Then you see it, حُطَامَ And it becomes withered. 
it becomes dry and broken. This is the reality of the dunya. The person is obsessed with the dunya. He has busied his body with it. He has busied his heart with it. And he can't take any of it with him. And he becomes, as is mentioned here, and what he had in the dunya becomes like what is mentioned here. Like leaves blowing in the wind. Like leaves blowing in the wind. Nothing. Worthless. His life was worthless. His dunya that he accumulated was worthless. All that he busied himself with and busied his heart with, it was worthless. Because he did not make it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ عَذَابٌ شَدِيدٌ And in the hereafter is a severe torment. وَمَغْفِرَةٌ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَضْوَانٌ And a tremendous forgiveness from Allah. وَرَضْوَانٌ And a tremendous Good, and the tremendous good pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma arudha anna wa Allah be pleased with us. Wa mal hayatu dunya illa mata'un ghurur. And what is the life of this world? Illa mata'un ghurur. Here again, nafi wa ithbat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has negated, just as He began by saying, I'lamu anna mal hayatu dunya. Know that the life of this world for certainty is nothing but. For certainty is nothing but the following things, the five qualities that we heard. And then he closes by saying, وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ dunya," Summarizing all that he said in this most descriptive verse about the reality of the dunya in the Qur'an. وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ dunya إِلَّا مَتَاعُ الْغُرُورِ And what is the life of this world? Meaning, the ma here is the ma of a nafi. Ma al nafiya And it is the ma of negation. Meaning that it is nothing except for the following thing. إِلَّا مَتَاعُ الْغُرُورِ it is nothing but mata' and it is an enjoyment, it is that which people enjoy, it is that which the people and they are pleased with, and so on and so forth, al ghurur of delusion. And it is a short enjoyment. It is nothing but a deluded enjoyment. And this is verse number so this is verse number twenty of Surah Al Hadid. Al Ayatul Thaniya. The second verse is similar to this verse. Innamal إِنَّمَا مَثَلُ الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا كَمَائِنْ أَنزَلْنَاهُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ And this verse number 24 of Surah Yunus. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, إِنَّمَا مَثَلُ الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا That the parable of the life of this road, it is nothing but the following thing. It is nothing but the following thing. كَمَائِنْ أَنزَلْنَاهُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ It is like rain water that we sent down from the sky. فَاخْتَلَطَ بِهِ نَبَاتُ الْأَرْضِ and so, it intermingled with the vegetation of the earth. It intermingled with the vegetation of the earth, of that which is devoured by the people and, devour, and, and devoured and eaten by the animals. Notice here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he, in the first verse that we hear, Surah Al Hadid, he called the rainwater Ghaith. He called it beneficial rainwater. Beneficial rainwater. Here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he just says rainwater or water falling from the heavens, as opposed to beneficial rainwater. Because in the first instance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned the two outcomes of what a person does with the dunya. And the hereafter is either a painful torment or forgiveness from Allah and His Ridwan. That requires a dunya. As was stated by Sa'id ibn al-Musayyib, Rahimullah Ta'ala, he said, لا خير في من لا يحب هذا المال. He said, there is no good in a person who doesn't love this money. Meaning, what is halal from this money? Why? He said, in order, يعني يكفو به ضيعته, in order to take care of his responsibilities. وَيَصُونُ بِهِ عَرْضَهُ And he had to protect his honor, to protect his dignity. So these two things are obligatory for a person to protect his dignity. To be walking around, and he like dervishes, and they say in some of the countries where Sufism was rampant, and is still rampant, and he the person, he may be somewhat wealthy, the Sufi sheikh, he dresses up in tattered clothing, and he goes and he sits at the <coughs> mashahid at the place, and where the people come and make shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
and worship the graves and so on and so forth. And the people, they bring their wealth. The people, they bring their wealth and he accumulates it all and he acts like the guy that I hate the dunya. Right? That's what tasawwuf is, he says. It's nothing but a zuhd. And he, I hate the dunya. Right? He's living like a fat cat. Right? Living like the grand puba. Right? He's in the back of the masjid. Right? Living like a fat cat. Right? Eating off the fat of the land. But he says he hates the dunya. And he, some people, they thought that a zuhd was for a person to have tattered clothing. And he, they thought that a zuhd was for a person and he, to leave off pursuing halal sustenance in this world. When Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, rahimahullah ta'ala, saw some people sitting outside the masjid begging, yatakafafun al nas, with their hands out begging the people. He said, Man ha'ula? Qalu an nusak. He said, who are, who are these people? They said, These are the nusak. And these are the people of the zuhd, the zuhad, the people of ibadah. He said, Bal ha'ula al mubtari'a. He said, these are the people who have introduced something new to Islam. That's not from our religion. That's not from our religion, but rather from our religion is to take care of the rights of Allah and the rights of the creation with the wealth that Allah has sent. So notice in the first verse, Allah called the rainwater ghayth. <coughs> Here, in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is dispraising the dunya entirely and the people who are obsessed with the dunya entirely. And He is criticizing the disbelievers. And so he just calls it rainwater falling from the heavens because what it produced was of no benefit to the people. What it produced was of no benefit to the people. He said, He said, And so it intermingles with the vegetation of the earth. Of that which is devoured by the people and devoured by animals, by the cattle. He said, Until the earth it takes its adornment. وَأَزَيَّنَتْ And it beautifies itself. وَظَنَّ أَهْلُهَا أَنَّهُمْ قَادِرُونَ عَلَيْهَا And the people of this dunya, they imagine themselves and suppose themselves to have full control over it. أَتَاهَا أَمْرُنَا لَيْلًا أَوْ نَهَارًا Then our order comes to it unexpectedly by night or by day. Our order comes to the dunya. Kingdoms fall. Economies plunge. Your life comes to an end unexpectedly. All these sorts of things. أَتَاهَا أَمْرُنَا لَيْلًا أَوْ نَهَارًا Our order comes unexpectedly to the dunya by night or by day. فَجَعَلْنَاهَا حَصِيدًا And so we make it حَصِيدًا like a harvested field. Like a field after all of the crops have been pulled up and uprooted. We make it حَصِيدًا like a harvested field. كَأَنْ لَمْ تَغْنَ بِالْأَمْسِ as though previously, the day before, I had no avail, as though I had nothing to offer a benefit. And as such, do we explain our verses in detail for a people who contemplate and reflect? Al ayatul thalitha, wa fi surat al kahf, wa nasuha. And he, in surat al kahf, he says, the author, Hafid al Hakami, he said, and likewise, the parable of the dunya has been mentioned in Surah Al-Kahf. He said that exactly what he means by it is verse number 45 of Surah Al-Kahf. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَضْرِبْ لَهُمْ مَثَلَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا كَمَاءٍ أَنزَلْنَهُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ فَاخْتَلَتَ بِهِ نَبَاتُ الْأَرْضِ فَأَصْبَحَ هَشِيمَةً تَذْرُوحُ الْرِيَاحِ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ مُقْتَدِرًا He said, and Set for them, O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Strike for them the parable and the likeness of the life of this world. The likeness of the life of this world. It is like water descending from the heavens that intermingles with the vegetation of the earth. For asbaha hashima, and then thereafter the vegetation of the earth it withers and it becomes lifeless and broken and so on and so forth, being scattered by the winds. He said, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has power over all things. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has tremendous power over all things. And this is from the instances, from the few instances in the Quran where Allah mentions this name of His. From the names of Allah concerning His Qudra is Al Qadir, Al Qadir, and Al Muqtadir. 
Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ مُقْتَدِرًا The strongest of these three names are Al-Muqtadir. Al-Muqtadir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is tremendous in His power and His ability. And we mentioned also that and he, Al-Qudra, and he is that which emanates from will, as opposed to Quwa, and he, Quwa, and he, you could say that steel is stronger, iron is strong, so on and so forth. But Qudra always has the implication of it coming from will. And so here, Allah, by his tremendous will, has executed his will upon the dunya and demonstrated his tremendous power upon the dunya by taking it from a situation of growth and what was seemingly progress and prosperity and so on and so forth to the dunya being like withered up leaves and so on and so forth blowing about in the wind. This is the reality of this world and this is the reality of the people in this world blowing in the wind. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has tremendous power over all things. He said, as for the fourth and the fifth verse that I mentioned here by the Shaykh after mentioning the verses pertaining the parable of the dunya, then they are verse number 185 of Surah Ali Imran, where Allah says, illa mata'un ghurur, and he, what is the life of this world except for a fleeting enjoyment? And likewise, verses number 196 and 197 of the same Surah, Surah Ali Imran, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَا يَغُرَنَّكَ تَقَلُّبُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا فِي الْبِلَادِ Do not be astonished and deluded by the movements of those who disbelieve in the earth. مَتَاعٌ قَلِيلٌ ثُمَّ مَأْوَاهُمْ جَهَنَّمُ وَبِئْسَ الْمِهَادِ And it is nothing but a short enjoyment. And then their abode will be the fire and what a horrible abode. The sixth verse is in Surah Tifatir. And it is verse number five where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ إِنَّ وَعَدَ اللَّهِ حَقٍّ فَلَا تَغُرَنْ فَلَا تَغُرَنَّكُمْ الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا وَلَا يَغُرَنَّكُمْ بِاللَّهِ الْغَرُورِ O you who believe, or O mankind, rather indeed the promise of Allah is true, so do not be deceived by the life of this world, and do not be deceived concerning Allah by the chief deceiver, meaning shaitan. And this is verse number 5 of Surah Fatir. The seventh verse of eight verses that I mentioned here, by the author is the statement of Mu'mini Ali Fir'aun, the believer from the family of Fir'aun, where he said, as Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ani he said, وَقَالَ الَّذِي آمَنَ يَا قَوْمِ اتَّبِعُونِ أَهْدِكُمْ سَبِيلَ الرَّشَادِ And the one who believed from the people of Fir'aun, he said, O oh my people, follow me and I will guide you to the path of correct and rightly guided behavior. <coughs> يَا قَوْمِ إِنَّمَا هَذِهِ الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَ مَتَاعٌ this is from the basis of our da'wah to the disbelievers. To remind them that the life of this world is nothing but a short enjoyment. And the hereafter, it is the world of permanence. It is a world of permanence. And so this was the statement of the believing man from the people of Fir'aun. After Fir'aun, he said, Daruni aqtul Musa wal yad rabba. When he told Haman and Qarun and his dignitaries and his family, just let me kill Musa and let him call upon his Lord to help him. And the man from the people of Fir'aun, he said, أَتَقْتُلُونَ رَجُلًا أَنْ يَقُولَ رَبِّي Allah." Are you going to kill a man just because he says, My Lord is Allah? We mentioned in the class on Wednesday of the, in the seerah of the Prophet wasallam, the instance of Uqba ibn Abi Mu'ayt, alayhi la'natullah, the one who spat in the face of the Prophet wasallam on one occasion. On another occasion, he put the entrails of any the uh, decomposed entrails of a camel on the back of the Prophet ﷺ when he was in sajda until Fatima removed it. Another occasion, he came behind the Prophet ﷺ and he grabbed the clothing of the Prophet ﷺ and strangled him. And one narration said, To the eyes of the Prophet ﷺ bulged. And Abu Bakr, he came and he threw him off. And he said the same statement of the believer of the people of Fir'aun. Are you going to kill a man because he says, My Lord is Allah? Are you going to kill a man because he says, My Lord is Allah? There's a lengthy passage after that of the da'wah. And it is two pages, two full pages in the Quran. 
the da'wah of this believing man from the people of Fir'aun and the courage that he had in calling his people to Islam and in refuting Fir'aun to his face. And he said, and he in his da'wah to his people, he said, O oh my people, indeed the life of this world is nothing but mata'ah. It is nothing but a short enjoyment. It is nothing but a simple, small enjoyment. وَإِنَّ الْآخِرَةَ هِيَ دَارُ الْقَرَارِ And the hereafter, it is the road of permanence. وَأَمَ الْآيَةُ الثَّامِنَةَ As for the eighth and last verse that mentions to us the reality of the dunya in the Qur'an, not limiting what is mentioned in the Qur'an in this regards to these verses, but the most obvious and important of verses in the Qur'an that were selected by this very intelligent scholar, Hafid ibn Ahmad ibn Ali al-Hakami. May Allah have mercy upon him. There's a statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Ahqaf, verse number 35. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he said, كَأَنَّهُمْ يَوْمَ يَرَوْنَ مَا يُعَدُونَ لَمْ يَلْبَثُ إِلَّا سَاعَةً مِنْ نَهَارٍ بَلَاغٌ فَهَلْ يُحْلَكُ إِلَّا الْقَوْمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, then on that day that they will she, that on that day that they shall see what they have been threatened with, Lam Yalbathu Illa Sa'at min Nahar, then it will be to them as though they had not remained in the dunya except for a single hour in the day. It will seem to the disbelievers as though they were only in the dunya for a single hour and a single day. Balag This is a full conveyance of Allah's message. These are, these are the last verses of this surah showing you the importance of these verses. And so are anyone destroyed and caused to perish except for a people who rebel against the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the author, he mentions a number of passages pertaining the reality of the dunya from the ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu and we'll uh, read that in our next session. Bi idnillahi tabarak wa ta'ala. As regards next weekend, we encourage.